back to Twinkle Farms. I'm Jessica. Let's talk about starting from nothing. So I bought this property um, back in the beginning of December, but actually the very last day of November, um, 2021. And it was just basically a forest with a house on it and two little open areas. So, um, there's nothing here, really. There's no, you know, fencing, garden beds, anything already set up. So really starting here from nothing and building it into a homestead. Um, something that I would hopefully be able to bring in some profits and, you know, just grow it into a farm. So the main goal here for me is I'm just documenting my accomplishments here so that I can look back and if in the meantime, it helps somebody understand a mistake I made or, you know, I can teach somebody something that they didn't already know, fantastic. Anyway, I did want to show you some things that I'm already working on. This is my little propagation area. So my propagation station, let's say. And I brought the shelving with me. However, in the process of moving the middle shelf, it's like fiberglass shelves, um, got lost. So I'm improvising with that. I hope to actually find or buy another one. This is made by Tubecraft Inc. And it's older, I did buy it secondhand, but it's pretty amazing. I replaced the lights that it came with with these LED lights and I only have two. So either later this season for the fall garden, I'll get a third one or next year. I don't know yet. Um, but that's where I've been starting all my plants for this season. And it's worked out pretty good so far. Um, the tomatoes are a little leggy because I didn't have the lights at first. I just had them in a window, but they're, they're coming along. Excuse me. So I'll take you outside and please do not worry about the mess. It is um, kind of crazy. It's a little bit of a jungle. And that'll all be rectified soon because in my last video, I explained to you that I was having a logger come out here and out of the nine and a half acres that I do have the trees growing on, I was going to originally leave three acres with the trees, but because I spent all of my money and dumped it into buying the property outright in cash, um, I did have a little bit of a setback there because I did have somebody who I care about very deeply and it's okay, it, it, you know, it, things happen. Who took some money from me, a decent chunk of money. Um, so I literally have nothing. <laughs> so talking about starting from nothing, I have nothing, but it'll get there. It's all good, it's all good. Um, so when he told me the price that I was going to get for six acres of the trees, I kind of went back and said, well, by the math you did, can I get this much if you take on nine and a half? And he said, yeah, we'll put it in writing. So trees are gone. Trees are going to go. I need the money more than I need the trees. And I love the trees. And I know trees can be replanted and they probably won't grow to the size they are now in my lifetime, but it's okay. It's okay. Um, can always buy another property with trees too. Uh, and I need it cleared. I need, I need the space for my goats. I need the space for my pigs. I need the space for emus. It's in the plan. It's in the plan. Um, so yeah. And I have to show you my dog, but that might be another episode. Um, I have a puppy that I got a couple months ago and he is amazing. And the whole purpose for originally getting the puppy was because I, sh for a short period of time, worked for a dog breeder 
at his facility and crunching the numbers. I'm like, he's making how much? How much a year? And I'm doing all the work? Mm, no. So uh, then I decided, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna venture out on my own and do that too, because that's still farming. They called it the dog farm. So I got my little Ferguson. He is a mini Dosh Hound. I think I'm saying that right. But that's the kind of dog that I wanted. And I found one, went out and bought him, drove six hours to pick him up, drove six hours back. And he is the best dog ever. Um, perfect for breeding because he's got the best personality. So, and he's a wire hair. He's really cute. I'm going to end up... Uh, starting a breeding program and if I say it here I have to do it this is my motivation my motivation is you guys and putting it out there so if I say it gotta do it um, anyway this is the first garden bed that I started here I'm lying to you this is not the first garden bed this is the second garden bed here and I planted everything from seed, so things are starting to sprout. They're actually all, if you can see them, radishes. Um, but there's a lot, there, there's a bunch of stuff planted there. Um, I had to dig it all with a shovel because I have no equipment, and that's why my yard is overgrown because I have no equipment right now. With the trees coming down, I have to. The most of the money's already gone. It's going to. Uh, help family members uh, but the rest of the money is gonna go for stuff that I need here which is very little bit but I'm gonna make it I'm gonna stretch it we're gonna stretch the buck um, the first thing I did and I can't really show you because everything's so tiny was planted a mini orchard back there in my house and that's not going to be my main orchard, but like when I first come out my house, I'll have some things that I can go and harvest from. So that's really good. I also have four dogs total, so I needed a dog area. So this is off to the side. Um, and they kind of like put a crimp in my plans because they put my well... Um, they put my well right where I was going to do like my kitchen garden for myself, which is, it's right here. Um, and this whole area that I'm standing in now was gonna be my kitchen garden, um, which I'm still gonna plant stuff here, but it's just not gonna be what I originally planned. And then, I don't know if y'all know this, but digging garden beds by hand is really, really hard. It's really difficult. It's not fun. It's not easy. It's not something that I would tell anybody to ever try to do, but because I have nothing, if you need, if you need to do what you need to do, do it. Um, the original plan was no dig beds, which hopefully I'm hoping next year that I can implement that. But right now, you know, with nothing, you do what you got to do. So the no dig beds were no go for this year. Um, didn't have the money for compost. Didn't have the money for anything. So I did put down cardboard everywhere. Well, in a few spots, not everywhere. I'm embellishing. Uh, to start the no dig beds, you know, lay the cardboard down, do the lasagna thing, whatever, whatever. But it still came in handy because the cardboard did kill the grass. So when I started to dig, this is my other bed that I already made most of it. And I actually planted 10 tomatoes here, 10 bushing cucumbers. And then in the middle of it, I put lettuce that I started, but with the storm that we just got and everything, I'm not sure that the lettuce is going to make it. And Last night was pretty cold, and the next two nights are supposed to be pretty cold, too. So, I mean, the, the tomatoes could die, too. I don't know. But if it does, I have started over 100 tomato plants. I'm not too concerned about it. Um, these are all one kind. These are Aunt Rudy's German tomatoes right here. And I do have more of them in the house. And the reason I'm doing this all one kind is because I am going to do the seed saving 
um, maybe if I if I if I save enough, offer you guys some for sale, make some income, <laughs> um, and you know go from there. Again, these are tomato cages, but I was like I said, I was doing the mini orchard thing right here near my house, and there's four right here that are or were grapes. I don't think they made it. I planted them too early, but oh well, you know, trial and error. That's what this is all about. And then I do have a few other things. I have a fig tree. Now these were all planted at the same time. The fig tree came back. I have two Nanking cherry bushes. I think I'm saying that right. I don't have a paper to read off of. And then I have this like trellis system thing. So there's two of these, one at each end. I have three loofah plants here. And then the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna put some string across there. Now remember this is all in the budget. Like if I had money, this would be different. <laughs> But it's, it's, it's a start. And that's what I'm trying to say. Oh, just start somewhere, right? So then I have a another fruit bush. And the name of it is just slipping out of my mind right now. It's okay. I'll put it down in the comments. And then I have this peat tree which still is green but it's not producing any leaves or buds really so I'm a little concerned about that but even if it dies whatever there's next year then this was another one of those things oh gooseberries that, that was a gooseberry the first one that was a red gooseberry this was a, one of those white gooseberries i'm not giving you the actual names because I, I just don't know them it's written down but this one didn't make it so replace then i have a plum tree here leaves so i don't know no leaves leaves and then I planted a kiwi that didn't make it. And there's four tomato cages here with thornless blackberries, but there are three different kinds. So the two middle ones are the same. One of those didn't make it, but again, I'll propagate and replace it. No big deal. And then at the end, is another bush. Um, chokeberry? Yeah, chokeberry. So those are, those are my trees, bushes in my mini orchard that I started. I think that was actually the first thing that I dug to plant. Oh, and then I have, let me, before I go over and show you the rest of it, I have my ducks. So my Muscovy ducks, and I made this, uh, this run to be like one of those uh, movable tractor things that everybody talks about and it's awesome I made it at um, my daughter's house when I was staying with her because after I put my property up for sale I moved down here to Vir for Virginia where I'm living now and I my daughters and I got a place and we stayed in Virginia for a while in the mountains it was great and then I went and I stayed with my son for the whole last year after my place sold because once my place sold the market switched so it went from everything was priced way reasonably that I you know I can completely afford to skyrocketing and now I can't afford anything so when I found this property 12 and a half acres I jumped drove the six hours up here it was like where do I sign gotta steal a video and it is what it is. It might not be my forever place, but it's my for now. But anyway, my ducks, my Muscovy ducks, there's five of them. There's one male and there's four females. And she is sitting on 
was 18 eggs. Now it's 14 eggs. I found one cracked open in the water and don't know what happens to the other ones, but I did see a big snake um, here. I don't know if I should say this, but I made the mistake of killing it because I was scared. I was scared not for myself, but for my ducks and everything else. It was a rat snake, y'all. Like, I should not have killed that snake. And it was a huge snake. And I was, like, devastated for a week after I did that. Like, what? why? Why? That was senseless. But, anyway. Let's move on. <laughs> that sucked. So, I mean, I have rat snakes here, obviously. And, but the, the logger came out. Um, this was supposed to be two different, you know, videos, but I can't help myself and I, I'm just squishing it to one. So I'll just go back into the long view. The logger came out yesterday. I told you, you know, I was only going to do a portion of a large portion of the property and try to keep some trees because I, I am a tree hugger. I'm a tree hugger. I love trees. I love nature. And when I go up to the mountains to my daughters and visit, that's all I want to do. Get me in the woods. Like, I want to walk the trails. I want to find my wild herbs. Ooh, I'm digging this stuff up and bringing it home and replanting it. I, you know, I don't know about you all, but that's my jam. So, on the property, too, I found some barbed wire that was here and utilized before I guess all wound up in a thing so I will use that and I have like th two I thought I had three two or three of these um things of old fencing because I can't afford it right now when I do get this money for the trees I'm going to probably, and I'm not, I'm not counting myself a hundred percent on this, but I would like to get three goats to start that. Um, to get another dog to breed is a little bit more important to me, but the goats serve purpose. The goats would be milk. The goats would be other things. So, I mean, we'll just see, we'll just see what happens. Goats are cheaper. Um, and he's come and taken all of these trees. I can pick 20 to keep and that's going to be shade for my animals. And that's going to be on the far side of my property. Also hoping like, like hoping that it will like block a little bit of my neighbors because there's some young kids over there. And even though being on 12 and a half acres, you still deal with your neighbors um and they they're harmless they don't i don't think they mean any harm they're just having fun that's cool you know so right here i have garlic planted in these two little areas this was the first thing that i dug for the garlic because i had to get it in the ground um, I didn't do it the way that I wanted to do it. I didn't double dig or anything. So it's just garlic with some mulch on it. And it's the bedding from that, what I used for my chicks when they were in the house, in the containers, um, before I could put them outside. So it's all repurposed, reused. And then right here, I have two rhubarb plants and four asparagus with a bunch of onions intertwined around. So I know I'll have food. I mean, at this point, not a lot, not to survive off of, but I have stuff growing. Um, it's a start, right? It's a start. And here was some sad things that I transplanted from up my daughters and they're not doing so well. This is a uh, blood root which has, you know, medical, medical uses. I still have to research that a little bit, but I knew it did and I knew I wanted it and I saw it two years ago up there. So when I saw it this year, 
I dug some roots up and brought them home. Um, of course, if it grew in my area, I wouldn't have to bring it home. So I don't know how it will do, but it's only two little roots. Um, it's not going to affect anything, really. It's in the same basic area. I have a lot of wild raspberries, too. I don't know why I can't turn my my screen, my video around, and I have to keep just turning my whole body, but I used to be able to do it, I think. So, like, the wild raspberries, they're all over. I hope the loggers don't mess them up, because I know they're invasive, but my granddaughters do like to come pick raspberries and stuff, so... That'll be fun in the future. And over here, like I said, here's the barbed wire that was on the property that I will figure out some uses for. Um, but yeah, I basically wanted just to do another video, show you guys what I've done so far. I was going to do it in the last video when I first started and said, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what my videos are going to be about. But... I was a little embarrassed of the overgrowth because um, I don't have a lawnmower, I don't have a tiller, I don't have anything. I have a few, I have a shovel, a hand, a few hand shovels, um, and I have like a hoe, I think it's called. I don't know, whatever. Um, but when I moved from Pennsylvania here, I lost everything. I lost, I'd say. 65 75 percent of my belongings um just wasn't feasible for me to move it i didn't have you know the help i didn't have the money and i just thought at the moment like if it <laughs> like i'll i'll restart it's whatever um and that's what I'm trying to instill in my kids right now. Like, you lose something. It's not the end of the world. We'll get it again. Like, we'll figure it out. We'll just do it. Do it. And this tree right here, man. I don't know. You can't see it. Yeah, you can. Right there. Right. This tree. That All these branches coming out. It's my favorite tree. I don't know what it is. It's the leaves. It's the way the branches come out. I call it the tree of life. It's my tree of life. So they're going to leave that one. I have to find a few more fabulous trees in my, my forest here. I am, I am really, you know, <sighs> I am heartbroken. Like, I don't want to see the trees go. Oh, stop it. But right now, you know, the, the money is what's needed right now. So, for a good cause. Anyway, back to business, guys. Like... Sorry about that. Little moment. But yeah, so it's all gonna go. And he said he could start in about four weeks, four or five, I think he said five weeks, honestly. So five weeks, and then it should take about a week to get everything down. So in six weeks, I should have the money. And yeah, then things can get better. Rebuild, and then, you know, I didn't want to take all the trees down because on this side is really blocking my house from the road. And I like my privacy. First person that came here to check on my heater because my heating system didn't work when I first bought it. Shoot, it doesn't work. My heating system doesn't work. So I went December, January, and February without a heating system. I had just, you know, space heaters. And 
he came back here and he said, you're the, when you need to call me back, you're the, just tell me you're the woman in the woods and I'll know who you are. So I found that amusing. I'm not going to be the woman in the woods anymore, but I'll be the woman on the farm. So this was all going to be turned. And when I say this is all going to be done, it is not going to be done overnight. It's not going to be done in the next year. This is going to be a process. And I realize that. So y'all just come along. Like it's going to be a fun journey. It's going to be fabulous. I'm going to make this all right here behind my house, my orchards. I think I'm actually going to have, um, first I'm going to have my birds, like not right up near my house, but you know, close enough. I'm going to have my bird. Uh, oh, I didn't show you my chickens, but they're in a temporary small thing that I had brought with me. Um, my son bought me this gate for my old house. So I, I took the gate cause it's a metal gate and I just used that temporarily to, to house my chickens. And I'm really terrified about this bird flu thing. That's going to be another episode, but so my birds are going to have them set up, um, in, in different runs here that I'm going to build because I have like three or four different types of chickens and, I want to separate them so that the eggs are true so that I can incubate and maybe sell some chicks. That would be cool. And, you know, sell the Muscovy duck chicks if they hatch. That'll be cool. And then after, after I have the, the pens for all the chickens, I'm going <laughs> to have a bunch of tree stumps everywhere. Um, so... I don't know how I'm going to start that. If I'm going to take the tree stumps out first or I'm going to work around them. I'm assuming I'm going to have to take them out first. My plan is, and y'all comment, please tell me if you think I'm being silly or if you think there's a better way. My plan is to cut the, when the trees get cut out of here, to let them sit on this side anyway, on both sides. But on this side, they're going to sit and then, you know, eventually I'll start burning them out. I was told that that's the thing, but I haven't tried it. So comment about that. And then on this side of my driveway, all the way up is where I'm going to have the larger animals, like the goats and the emus and the, um, the piggies. So I was just going to let them now, this is the side I'm going to keep the 20 trees for shade and, and, and stuff for them. Um, But I was just going to let them like root around the stumps and then eventually maybe burn them out. Or maybe the pigs will root a lot of the stumps up. I don't know. Like, we'll see what happens. Because for me right now to pay somebody to come in and pull out all the stumps or grind them down or whatever they do is just, it, it's not going to happen. So... Oh yeah, this is gonna be organic. I mean, I'm not certified organic. I'm not gonna probably be certified organic, but that's for me, that's my goal. That's the way I wanna go, um, the avenue I would like to take. Maybe down the road, I'll, I'll get certified. I, I don't, I heard it's not hard if you do everything properly to get certified. So we'll see. Um, I, did ha I do have a major tick problem. So I'm hoping once the trees all come down, you know, ticks will go away. I don't know. But hopefully. And hopefully I can find some cool stuff underneath all the trees and the um, leaves and stuff on the property. It will be interesting. Up front, I have... I would walk you up there, but it'd be t another like 10 minute thing just to get there. And I'm not all about, you know, cut in, paste in, get what you get. This is real life. <laughs> this is the real thing. You know, once I get better at this, maybe I'll edit. But right now it's just not, it's not, an, it's not an edited. It's not, no, this is real. Um, I haven't like an awning, some kind of like, 
a place where I guess put my tractor, not my tractor, my ride-on lawnmower. It's going to be called a tractor from here on forward because that's just what I say, but it's a ride-on lawnmower that I don't have yet that I need to get. Um, I think I could put that under there, but I'm worried somebody might steal it because it's all the way up front and then there's going to be no trees hiding it. But shoot, we'll figure it out. And I do have to get a shed because right now I have all my tools in my kitchen. I don't want tools in my kitchen. It's whatever. <laughs> and I know I'm saying whatever so much, but seriously, like, you have to just say whatever and laugh or else you're going to cry. I'm going to cry. You can cry with me if you want. But just whatever, man. God bless me with the property. God bless me with the ability to buy the property. Um, God bless me with the trees on the property. So we're just keeping faith and going forward and we're going to, we're going to get there. So my, my son-in-law, well, my girl, my daughter's boyfriend, he is so cute. <laughs> he did try to help me. Um, you see that little bag right there? A little white thing? That's his chainsaw stuck in a tree. <laughs> we were gonna, we had this plan where we were gonna, you know, I guess thin out the trees on our own. And, you know, we could probably like sell logs, sell the trees, or, you know, cut some firewood and sell firewood. And then I wanna get, um, a wood burning cook stove inside because I don't even have a stove. Um, a wood burning cook stove inside, and that would heat the house. And in the winter time, I'd cook in there on it. And then I wanted to build an outside cook area too for the summer. I think that was the second tree, and it kind of like I don't know. Can you see it? Yeah, you can. It kind of just goes over in a curve. Well, he cut on the inside of the curve and then he just got it stuck. And I had a friend come over and try to push up the tree later to get it out. But no, mm -mm, not going to happen. So he's going to come by hopefully before they start cutting the trees down <laughs> in the next month with another chainsaw to get his chainsaw out. But it's just funny and it's cute. He's so helpful. Love you, Chris. Um, but again, this is what I have done so far and I'm pretty proud of it. Like it's little, it's not much, but like I dug those beds by hand with a, with a shovel. That was like hard, but I did learn you wait after a rain is much easier, which I need to go do another one today and dig it because we just had rain and it's overcast. And being in the heat of the sun, digging that stuff is, oh Lord, something else. And I love heat, but I tell you, when you start getting dizzy about to pass out, that's not, it's not fun. <laughs> it's not fun. Anyway, this is my little chicken setup. It's so ghetto. But like I said, this is temporary. It is what it is. We just had rain. Um, and something got one of my guineas. Nope, it's not a guinea. Something got one of my chickens. Well, that's a first. They've been in there for like a month. Gosh, that's sad. I have to move it anyway because they need a new grass area. It's just going to be a pain because I'm going to have to round them all up. It's not easy to move. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Again, this is just something for me to look back on. It's not trying to be anything professional. And if I do something and you can give me better advice, please, by all means, do. Or if you take something away from it. Let me know and um, that will make my day. So have a good one, y'all. Maybe 
you know, in the next couple weeks, you'll see another video of the loggers coming here. And I will video that for you and taking the trees out. And I'll probably be in a panic because are they gonna like fall a tree on my house, my car, like, yikes. Um, but anyway, we'll get through it. And I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks guys, bye.